Want to know how to get legendary gear in Battleborn and if they are the best thing after gummy bears to supercharge your gameplay? Well, then stick around and I'll tell you all about that. The Dutch weather may be cloudy, but Mental Mars is dropping some freaking bombs! Hey, Mental Mars here and welcome to Battleborn. So in this video I'm gonna talk about the legendary gear in the game, telling you how to obtain them and if they are the best thing out there. However, what is legendary gear? Well, gear comes in various varieties. You got your common white gear that boosts one stat like attack damage, attack speed, reload speed, increased health or shield, heal power, damage reduction, skill damage and so on. But these also have a chance to have one negative stat. So you can have gear with health regen at the cost of sprint speed. Having a negative stat on your gear means that you get a reduction in the activation cost. And at the price of this common white gear means that the price will be reduced to a zero activation cost. And remember that negative stat? Well, it doesn't have to be negative because there are some loopholes. And I will tell you more about that later in the video. Then you have your uncommon green gear that has one primary stat and a secondary stat with a condition. When meeting this condition you will get a smaller temporary boost. For example, if your health is below 50% you will get health regeneration. Another example is increased skill damage for 10 seconds after killing a minion or a minor enemy. These uncommon green gear can also have one negative stat on them, which also reduces the activation cost. Then we have one of my favorite gear types, the rare blue gear. These have one primary stat and a matching secondary stat with a condition. And one of my favorite pieces of gear for Oscar Mike is the Rifleman's Hill Fire Max. Which primary and secondary stat is Reload Speed. And you gain that secondary reload speed buff by completing a reload. So if you keep shooting and keep reloading, it's glorious. However, these blue types of gear can also have a negative stat on them, but at least they will lower the activation cost. Then we have the epic purple gear. These have two stats with no conditions. So you got one big buff with the primary stat and a smaller buff with the secondary stat. But the secondary stat doesn't have a requirement that you need to trigger in order to obtain it, like with the rare blue gear. These types of gear can also come with a negative stat which reduces the activation cost. And finally we have the legendary orange gear, where all the other gear only provide one or two boosts. These legendary gear provide three. So you got your big primary boost and your smaller secondary boost and then there is one legendary boost that provides a unique buff that isn't restricted by the rules the other gear have. So you can have legendary gear that has stats that normally wouldn't pair with each other. And then there are some special abilities. And this is where things become interesting. Because you can have gear that provides unique abilities like on death your shield explodes and deals massive amount of damage. Or damaging an enemy shield powers your own shield. A skill preventing enemy shields from recharging. Once every few seconds a critical melee hit will blind your enemies. So now you know what gear can do, but how do you get it? Well, by simply playing the game. This way you earn credits that you can spend on loot packs. The core loot pack has a small chance of dropping a legendary gear. You can also get various loot packs as a reward for leveling up. So that's a way of getting gear. But it's not a very effective way of getting legendaries. A good way to get specific legendaries is in the story mode, as you will have a good chance that a boss will drop a legendary item. Each boss has his own loot pool with a few unique legendaries assigned to them. Usually two for the normal mode and an additional two on the advanced difficulty. Also, while you are playing these missions, go and aim for the high score. As each time on each mission when you hit that diamond ranking you will earn a legendary loot pack. And this works on any difficulty setting. Legendary loot packs have a guaranteed chance of dropping a legendary. With the DLC missions there is also a great reward system to get quality gear. While the legendary effect on these boss drops in these missions only apply to the story operations, there are some other cool rewards. Because with these missions there's a way to obtain a score of 100 ops points and by achieving this score you will be rewarded with a commander faction pack. These gear packs have a good chance of giving legendary items. 
Don't be confused with the normal faction packs that are in the marketplace. The Commander faction packs deliver way better loot. And with the summer update Gearbox recently did, they made it so that each story operation gives you a specific Commander faction pack. These packs have an increased chance of dropping the new legendaries that were included with these story missions. Other interesting legendaries you can pick up are the hero specific legendaries. You can unlock these by completing the lore challenges that you can find in their command menu. By completing all 5 challenges you will be rewarded with a guaranteed max level legendary that has a unique modifier that is specific for that hero. These boosts will even change up the way character abilities work and therefore change up their playstyle. If you are playing the Battleborn Free Trial, don't bother completing the challenges for Atticus, Torn, Deande, Rav, Eldragon or Cleese, as all these heroes have lore challenges that require you to play the story mode, which isn't available in the Free Trial. At least, not for free. So those are some good ways to pick up legendary items. But are legendary items the best thing out there? Well, yes and no. While they do have powerful and unique things, they also come at a high price. When you play through the story missions, you can easily run a full legendary loadout. However, in the multiplayer you will be activating these items late game, as you will need to gather a lot of shards before you can activate them. So that does mean you won't be investing your shards into other stuff during the match. So it's a bit of a risk and reward system. Because first off, will your match even last that long? Also, you won't gain XP from purchasing buildables, so your opponent might be outleveling you there. So if you want to run a legendary loadout, please consider picking up a shard generator. A good shard generator is the Shard of Solace that came with the Founders Pack. It's a legendary shard generator with a zero shard activation cost. So this way you can start mining those shards when Nova is still explaining the multiplayer mode. But don't worry if you don't have the Founders Pack, there is actually somewhat of a better version already in the game. Remember those common white pieces of gear I mentioned earlier in the video? Well, there are common shard generators with a negative stat on them. These negative stats will reduce the activation cost to zero. But because it has a negative stat on it, doesn't mean it impacts your hero. Because an Oscar Mike doesn't heal, so you can have a piece of gear with negative heal power on it. Rav doesn't reload because he's a melee hero, so negative reload speed won't affect him. So these are neat little tricks to bypass the system. And you can get a free shard generator this way that outperforms the legendary shard of Solus. So that's it for legendary gear for now, have fun hunting them down. If you want to know which piece of gear you need to check out, go and watch my top 10 legendary gear video. Also let me know what your favorite legendaries are. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with some more Battleborn content. Dear other team, I've watched all of Mental Mars's videos. Now I could kick your asses even harder. XOXO, Oscar Mike.